File History You've seen this feature in almost every document-based program. An ability to quickly open a recently used file using the main menu. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to add this to your C++ desktop app using the WX widgets framework, regardless if you want it to work on Windows, Linux or Mac. So make sure you like and subscribe, and let's begin. Let's start with the WX file history class. We can use it directly or rely on the mechanics of the document view framework to do it for us. I'll get to that later in the video. For now, let's start with creating the file history object manually. Here's a basic WX widgets application. We have the application object and the main window named MyFrame. In the init method, we set the app name, which will be used by the framework for storing our file history, and we create and show the main frame. The main frame constructor calls the setup menu bar method. There we build the menu and add event handlers for the open and exit commands. For this tutorial, we simply want to show the file open dialog, let the user select the file and report back its name to make sure the correct one is added to the history list later. Let's run the app and see what we have so far. Here it is, an empty app with a basic menu. And that's our open file functionality. The user selects the file and the app shows its name. Let's add the file history. We include the required header and add the history object to the MyFrame class. We don't need it to be a pointer, we can store it by value. At a minimum, we need to call useMenu to point to the menu where the history should be stored and add the file to the history when it's opened. Let's see how this works. After opening a file, the file history object appends its name to the selected menu. In our case, that's the file menu. When we do it again, we add another file to the list. The app does not react to clicking on these names though. Also, when running the app again, we see that the recent file list is empty. Let's fix both issues. Restoring the file list is simple. We call the load method, pointing to the config object. Similarly, for storing the list, we call save after adding the file. Now we need to include the config header and we can run the app. We add a few files to the list and quit the app. After running it again, we see that the list is automatically populated thanks to the load method. Here's how this works. On Windows, the configuration data is saved in the registry, while on other systems, it's stored in a file. The location is determined by WX standard paths and your app name. For example, on Linux, my app configuration is stored as a hidden file in the home directory, while on Mac, it's saved to library preferences. Now the click handler for the file history items. The key here is to set up our callback for a range of IDs, from the first to the last file. Then, in the handler's body, we can subtract the first ID to get the item's index in the list. Then it's just a matter of getting the path from the history object. As we can see, this works as expected. Let's improve our app by putting the file list in a separate submenu and adding a clear history command. There is no clear method in the file history class, so we must delete the items individually until the collection is empty. To make all this work, we need to change the parameter for the use menu call. Now the file list is in a submenu, but it works just like before. Click events are handled correctly, and after opening a file, it's added to the list. Clearing also works well. That's how you use the file history class directly. If your app uses the WX Widgets document view framework, however, the implementation can be much simpler. Here's our paint app. We won't discuss how it works here, so check out my WX document tutorial if you want to learn more. For now, we'll focus on the app class and the main frame. Note the onExit method in the app. That's where we will save our list the configuration since the framework controls when the file open or file save dialogs are shown. The only other method we need to modify is build menu bar, and the changes are much simpler than when using the WX file history class directly. We have the history submenu and the file history object setup. 
For this, we use helper methods from the document manager. Again, check my document view framework tutorial if you need clarification on how this works. Similarly, for the clear history menu item, we again use doc manager to get to the file list. And that's all the code we need. The framework does everything else, including adding the files to the list and handling the list item click. And here's how this works. With just a few lines of code, we added the full file history functionality to our app. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I will see you in the next one.